The Nigerian Naira has lost close to 30% in value within the last one year and more than 200% in the last 10 years. The situation has led to a spike in capital outflows, high unemployment, alarming rate of inflation, and all the direct and indirect consequences associated with exchange rate crisis. Now, as part of efforts to ensure the stability of the Naira, the Central Bank of Nigeria injected $4.37 billion into the foreign exchange market. That's in the third quarter of 2020, as its periodic interventions to boost the supply side of the market as the COVID-19 crisis weakened the private sector supply chain segment of that market. According to the Apex Bank, the sustained interventions in the forex market and the resumed forex cash sales to the BDC operators is aimed at boosting liquidity and ease demand pressure as the external exchange rate, I beg your pardon, of the Naira against the dollar was further adjusted during the review period from 361 Naira to a dollar to 381 Naira to a dollar. The recent remittance policy introduced by the CBN is set to likely boost the inflow of forex into the country. Well, I also have joined me now via Skype from Lekki in Lagos for more insights and provide solutions to the issues concerning forex management. He is the former president of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria. He's the professor of economics, uh, Professor Shegun Ajibola. Thank you very much for your time, Prof. Professor Ajibola, I don't know if you can hear me. I can hear you. Good afternoon to you. Thank you very much for your time. Now, Prof, over the years, we have seen the CBN inject huge dollar funds to ensure and sustain liquidity in the foreign exchange market. Do you think this is sustainable or is a sustainable model to stabilize the market as we move on in 2021? As we all know, the major challenge in the foreign exchange market and the foreign exchange management generally is the supply side of the divide. You can only give what you have. And we do know that central bank itself is often under pressure to meet foreign exchange demand in the country. And if our situation, which has fostered on us a monolithic economic system, continues, then it is difficult for Central Bank of Nigeria to continue to meet the demand side of the foreign exchange market. What do I mean by that? We do know that about 80, 90 percent of our foreign exchange earnings as a country comes from just one product, that is oil export. And what does it generate? Petrodollar. If this situation continues, then it becomes very, very difficult to maintain equilibrium position in the foreign exchange market. But when we now talk about liquidity in the foreign exchange market, that speaks to a lot of things. First, liquidity in the foreign exchange market means there is the supply of foreign exchange to the market in the quantity that is being demanded for. Liquidity in the foreign exchange market means those who are users of foreign exchange, they also have enough of the foreign exchange to meet all their requirements. Liquidity in the foreign exchange market means those who promote rent-seeking syndrome in the market, they have been shut out. And it means that those who want to continue to play the role of speculators and arbitrators in the market will also be shut out. And the market is left in the hands of those who have legitimate transactions that require the use of foreign exchange. And the situation that we find ourselves today is such that 
the pressure on the foreign exchange market and the supply side of the market is so much that central bank has to continue to intervene in meeting the demand for foreign exchange market uh, for foreign exchange in the market. But can this continue indefinitely? No, for so many reasons. It cannot continue. Uh, you, let's now look at concerns of perceived forex scarcity, uh, which have made, we made headlines last year. Now that economies are battling with second wave of COVID-19, there is a very little pressure for forex. Uh, but when activities resume as forecast in second half of this year, do you think CBN will be prepared to meet this demand? Well, that itself is a function of so many things. First of all, is what happens to our major source of foreign exchange earnings in the country, that is the global oil market. From all indications, uh, COVID-19 is still ravaging so many countries, including our major trading partners. So what will be the impact of this on demand for our crude? So we pray that we have sustained demand for proof and we can have sustained earnings from crude exportation. So that is number one factor. Another major step that Central Bank of Nigeria has taken is, is in terms of uh, remittances by Nigerians in diaspora. I think that is a novel step. That is a very good policy. Then we need to complement that policy with some other incentives back home, it will get the best from Nigerians in diaspora through remittances. Most of our people send money home today, maybe to feed the aged, to take care of the sick, to pay school fees and some other corporate social, I mean, uh, personal social responsibilities and co. How do we introduce business sense? It will remit answers. How do we encourage Nigerians in diaspora to come back home and engage in businesses? What kind of incentives do we need to put in place so that Nigerians outside there can come back home, set up micro businesses, not to medium enterprises? This will ensure that the remittances that are coming, they are not just coming to support consumption. They'll be coming to support production. If we have this kind of template, if we need to launch that appeal, that they come, their remittances to support businesses, then we'll be able to introduce some business element into the remittances. And the regular flow of the remittances will be able to generate some multiplier effects back home. That is a major source that we can work on, mm. then we'll be able to support whatever is coming from the supply side by those remittances that will be supplying, I mean, will be, will, will be supporting businesses. Another issue for us to be able to, 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 to assure liquidity in the foreign exchange market is how do we encourage even the exporters in the real sector of the economy to continue to bring back their export proceeds and allow those export proceeds to flow into the official market. We need to do something there. We have a lot of policies in place. We have a lot of incentives for exporters in Nigeria, but how many of them are operational? How many of them are working? Nigeria Export Promotion Council, Nigeria Investment Promotion Council, Nigeria Export Import Bank, all the policies, all the incentives they have for exporters, how many of them are really alive today supporting these exporters? And that is where the disconnect is. Because these incentives are to encourage the exporters and to help them lower their unit cost of production. So that by the time they bring back the export proceeds and they sell in the official market, they will still have their profit assured. But if they kill the same cost, any other 
business promoter in Nigeria in Kios. If they pay the same thing, they don't enjoy the status. It, by the time they come back and they sell their foreign exchange at the official market, we just still be able to break even. So we need to look at all of this together in a basket that we encourage our exporters, we make available the incentives, we let the policies that are on ground work to support their businesses, to, to support their export. Then they will have the legal, the professional, the moral responsibility to surrender those export proceeds to also have liquidity in the foreign exchange market. If we, can, if, if we can address this theory, one doesn't really lie within our own our, our own doorsteps here. That is the happening in the global oil market. But the two other, how we can encourage Nigerians in their to inflow remittances to support business and support production, not just to support consumption. For example, can we even make it as a matter of policy that whatever percentage of remittances Nigerians in diaspora bring, a percentage of it will be available to them locally as loans, either for mortgage, either for small scale, either for micro businesses. Can we even introduce that policy among other policies that we have on grant? Then we'll be able to support remittances. We'll be able to support Nigerians in the world to be part of business generation in Nigeria. Then the area of incentives to exporters in the risk sector of the economy. How do we make these incentives, those policies that have been there, some of them have been there since 1960s, yeah, 1970s, I mean, 1990s? How do we make allow me. Uh, allow me to vote in, Prof, because I I'd like to quickly take you uh, to, to my next question, which is almost uh, devaluation of the Naira. And that's almost like a, a final question. Uh, back and forth, we've had issues around, around that. Now, do you think we will still see a free fall uh, of the Naira as we move on in the year if all of this remain the way they are? Well, that, that is a very, very difficult question. <laughs> and I want, I don't want to join the speculators. He <laughs> saying, yes, there will still be further devaluation in the value <laughs> of the net. But all I know is if we can take some of these steps that I've mentioned and also control the demand side, there are some areas of our national life today that we can work on and save from foreign exchange and reduce the pressure on the market and reduce the headache of central bank in having to look at the possibility of another devaluation. For example, if we make our refineries work, yeah. we save a lot of exchange uh, uh, exposure. Hmm. If, we, if, if, we, if, if we moderate our lifestyle, we consume what we produce, we produce what we consume. We save a lot of foreign exchange yeah. from that angle. So if we can work on some of these areas that will affect the demand side of the foreign exchange market and conserve foreign exchange for the country, then we'll have reduced the pressure and the need for further uh, devaluation will not arise in mm. 2021 at all. Professor Shego Ajibola, I think we're going to have a part two of this discussion because I see that there's a lot that we need to know uh, about, you know, regularizing our forex market, particularly we're talking about the parity, this disparity that uh, occurs between the f uh, bank exchange, the exchange rates at the bank and also at the parallel market. Thank you very much for your time, Professor of Economics and former president of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria. I appreciate your time with us today. Thank you very much.